In chapter 16, we're going to learn about sheet metal forming processes. We will describe the characteristics of sheet metals and forming processes employed to produce a wide range of products. We will start with explaining what shearing operation is, and then we will go with continue with learning uh, bending operations and conclude the chapter with deep drawing technique. Products made of sheet metals, they are all around us. Uh, examples are beverage cans, cookware, um, file cabinets, metal desks, appliances, car and truck bodies, trailers. So if we compare uh, sheet metal forming to other techniques like casting and forging, sheet metal parts offer the advantage of versatile sh shapes, uh, lightweight and high stiffness to weight ratios. And in the image you can see some examples of sheet metal parts, stamped and parts that are produced by spinning. And we're going to see what these techniques are. So when it comes to this technique, the most common material, so um, low carbon steel is the most commonly used sheet metal. And there are also other metals that are shaped with this technique, such as aluminum, uh, like beverage cans, packaging. There are other metals, there are other steels that can be shaped like titanium, etc. So, uh, the terms press working or press forming uh, are commonly used to describe this uh, sheet metal forming operations because uh, these are typically performed on presses. Uh, which are uh, using a set of dies. And a sheet metal part produced in presses is called stamping. Most processes involve uh, sheet metals at room temperature, but hot stamping is also done in order to increase formability. And of course, the forming load on machinery. This is, you can assume, similar to other techniques. Hot stamping is suitable for titanium alloys or high strength steels because the higher temperatures will provide more ductility, more formability to the part. There are uh, a lot of different sheet metal forming processes are available and we will not cover all of them but some of them and their characteristics are summarized in this table. We're going to learn about drawing, uh, rubber sheet metal forming, spinning, stamping and stretching and you can uh, after you are done with listening to the lecture you can come back to this table and read through the summaries uh, the characteristics of each of those forming processes that we have learned. So we will start with uh, shearing. So we will start with uh, describing the techniques which, by which the blanks are cut from large sheets and then further processed into desired shapes. And this is called shearing. So all sheet metal forming operations begin with a blank of suitable dimensions cut from a large sheet by shearing. So as the name implies, uh, this shearing is achieved using a punch and a die and it induces shear stresses uh, in the sheet. If you take a look at this image here, this figure, which is the illustration of shearing with a punch and a die, 
as you can see the die is here this is our sheet that we are trying to uh, form the blank from and we are trying to cut it to form the blank and as you can see due to the induced shearing forces uh, at regions A, B and C, D where there will be a um, fracture happening those fracture surfaces they are not smooth as you can see that uh, here they are not smooth by the application of those shear stresses shearing uh, starts with the formation of cracks on the on both the top and bottom edges of the workpiece a b c d and these cracks will meet each other leading to a complete separation and the surfaces are um, not smooth so if you take a look at the points a b c d um, the smooth and shiny burnished surfaces on the whole represented by b and d here this is due to uh, the slug is being in contact and rubbing the sheared edges against the walls of the punch and the die that's why this part is smooth and this part is due to the fracture it is rough and this type of formation is due to as you can see due to the penetration depth here we have we are seeing there's some penetration depth before the fracture actually takes place there are several different shearing operations the most common uh, shearing operations are punching uh, where a sheared slag is scrap or it may be used for other purposes so slag is the part that we are obtaining after this shearing okay so if we now look at here in punching we basically discard the punched area so if we'll take a look at the punching is punching is here so you do punching and you discard this region here to form the sheet uh, to form the blank from the sheet okay so that is where you discard that punched area this region okay so blanking is where the slug is the part or to be uh, used and the rest is scrap scrap is like where we dump the part okay scrap is the part we dump and slag is the part we're gonna use and therefore we in blanking we keep the punched area and discard the area surrounding the hole here so we discard this region now and keep this one okay so this one is called uh, the slag and this part where we dump it it's the uh, scrap another type of shearing operation is perforating here we punch a number of holes in a sheet you can see that perforating is here you basically punch a number of holes on, on a sheet all right so another technique another shearing operation to prepare the blank basically is parting shear the sheet into two or more pieces here two or more pieces right that is parting notching remove pieces from the edge edges here so you can prepare your blank by removing pieces uh, from the edges next is lensing leave a tab without removing any material 
like this one. Slitting. A pair of circular blades are used similar to uh, similar to can opener. So remember guys to visually understand please take a look at the videos I'm also sending and if you are having hard time understanding and visualizing in any of these operations and you don't have the videos uh, uh, you don't have cannot find it among the videos I sent you I suggest you always uh, googling and watching the videos to understand what visually these uh, processes are because um, I cannot show you the videos because we are not in face-to-face -face lecture but I want you to watch the videos I'm sending you okay don't forget that because it will help you to memorize help visually see what the process is actually about okay so slitting is using a uh, circular blades to uh, to cut the blank it's right there and from side it looks like that steel rules Thin strip of hardened steel is bent into the shape of the final product and pressed against the sheet uh, like a cookie cutter. Nibbling. Many overlapping holes are made by moving the punch up and down by, while moving the sheet. So these are easier to understand. I think there was an image to slitting here. Let me see. This one. Okay. So this is uh, like a circular blades, as you can see. And then scrap and shearing. So scrap is the material uh, we call trim loss, what we, is, we are actually dumping. So it's a loss. So can be as high as 30%. Uh, 30% of the sheet metal is actually lost after shearing. And this is a significant loss in manufacturing because you pay money to the whole uh, sheet before actually forming the blank but what you have to do is after the formation of blank you have to dump the remaining uh, remaining part we call the scrap so actually this is a lost Square edges with very smooth sheared surfaces can be produced if you do fine blanking. Uh, what is changing is the die design. A V-shaped impingement mechanically locks the sheet in place and preventing, you can see here, preventing um, the distortions. And this will result in smooth uh, fractured surfaces. You can actually compare conventional blanking with fine blanking. You see it is smooth overall, but in the conventional uh, blanking, some part of it is smooth, but shiny, some part of it is rough, as we have learned in here. Another type of a uh, technique to form the blanks is you might uh, your blank might not just have one piece okay it might be you might have to have different blanks and then you might need to weld them together in uh, the sheet forming processes uh, the blank is typically one piece sheet with a constant thickness which is cut from a large sheet but 
two or more pieces of sheet metals with different shapes and thicknesses can also be brought together when you do welding. As you can see, there are several in stage one. There are blanking and there is laser cutting of different uh, metals, different sheet metals with different shapes and thicknesses. These are then uh, welded together with laser welding. And then you do stamping. This has advantages such as better control of uh, dimensions, will eliminate the need for further welding operations, increase productivity and reduce the scrap, the wasted material. Now let's take a look at bending. One of the most common forming operations, bending. And we have examples of this technique in automobile bodies, exhaust pipes, appliances, paper clips, and file cabinets. Let's take a look at some terminology used in bending. Here we have bend length, which is the width of the part. And we have bend allowance, the length of the neutral axis in the bend. Neutral axis. Remember what neutral axis is, because when you bend the material, other part is going to be under tension. And the inner regions gonna be under compression, right? Like that. So in between a region we call the neutral region, the effect of tension and uh, compression will eliminate each other. So there is no compre compression or there is no tension somewhere in between. So because the outside part is in tension and due to the poison's effect uh, remember if one part is stretched the width of the part has to get smaller because the volume is the same so this is also seen here in this image this part is getting um, smaller compared to the original width and this bend allowance here which is the length of the neutral axis uh, it can be calculated from this equation right there which depends on the bend angle r the bend radius k is a constant and t is the thickness here is the alpha, the bend angle, and bend radius is right there. And K is a constant, a constant that depends on the distance of the neutral axis. So it is shown that the engineering strain uh, of um, the sheet during bending is given with this equation. Okay. So here it depends on R, the bend radius and bend angle. So when um, and the thickness, I'm sorry, not the bend angle, it depends on R, the bend radius and depends on the thickness T. So if you take a look at this equation, as you can see, as you decrease R over T ratio, the ratio of bend radius to the thickness, as this becomes smaller, the strain increases. And of course, as the strain increases, the material eventually develops cracks and fails. 
and those cracks can be seen in these images right there. What affects bendability of the part? So bendability decreases with increasing edge roughness. Because rough regions are acting as stress concentrators and therefore bendability decreases as edge roughness increases. Another factor is the presence uh, amount and shape and hardness of inclusions that are present in the sheet metal and the amount of cold working that the edges have undergone during shearing because remember first we do shearing to form the blank before we do the uh, bending and during shearing you are also doing cold working and increasing the strength of the material therefore increasing the material being more brittle the possibility of being more brittle so an isotropy of the sheet if you let's say prepare the sample before blanking prepare it with a cold a cold rolling and therefore these inclusions are actually aligned in certain order like if you see let's say you did the rolling in this direction and uh, of course inclusions aligned in certain direction on along that direction and what happened here you can see inclusions being aligned of course this will affect the formation of cracks cracks will form along the certain direction because your material now uh, shows an isotropy okay what you can do to prevent this you can actually um, cut the sheet in a preferred orientation for example you can if the rolling is towards this direction and if the cracks uh, the inclusions are aligned in this direction then you can do the bending uh, in this manner which will not result on uh, the formation of cracks so what is spring back Think about if you try to bend an aluminum foil, there is some part of it is elastic uh, deformation, some part of it is plastic deformation. So some part of it will be recovered, right? So there is this elastic deformation amount that will be recovered. And your material is, let's say you uh, bend it this manner. But then this includes some elastic and plastic deformation and elastic deformation will recover so it will go back to this position. So this is called spring back recovery of the elastic uh, deformation. And this has to be accounted for during the bending. Spring back uh, found to be increasing with the increasing R uh, over T ratio and the yield strength but it decreases with increasing elastic modulus how can you compensate for the spring back you can do over bending of the part and uh, take account into the possibility of the spring back and you can design certain bending operations that might prevent this type of elastic uh, recovery. So what is the bending force? Bending force for sheets uh, is, is calculated through this equation uh, given. So it depends on the yield strength of the material i'm sorry the ultimate tensile strength uh, or the tensile strength of the material 
Okay, so there is a mistake here. This should be the yield strength. Okay, so anyhow, uh, it depends on the K and a constant uh, yield strength of the material L, the length of the band, T, the thickness of the sheet, and V, the die, the W, the die opening. So die opening means you might do, this might be your die and you have a punch like this and there is your sheet, right? You are trying to bend it. It will form something like that after that. When you apply the force here to your punch and this is the die and this part is the W. which is the die opening. As you see, the K depends actually on the type, the shape of the die. And then uh, as the length and um, uh, thickness of the sheet increases, the force, the bending force is increases. As the die opening decreases, bending force is increases. Please don't forget to watch the videos of different bending processes uh, in canvas that I'm sending you the links of. So what are common uh, bending operations? All of these bending operations has videos provided to you and you should watch them while actually listening to the lecture so it will help you visualize it the first one is press break forming in press break forming the sheet metal uh, bend using simple fixtures in a press so in this images you are seeing uh, various bending operations in a press uh, break. You see uh, a variety of different types, for example, uh, channel forming using uh, dies here, as you can see, and juggling here. Uh, flattening or hemming we're gonna see that and two stage lock seam here you have two different parts that you are connecting and offset forming and this is the equipment that is being used so here is the sheet metal comes right there and there is the die holders and rem applying the pre pressure and then bending the sheet okay so what about roll bending well roll bending uh, the plates are bent using a set of rolls if you watch the video you can see so you're gonna use a set of rolls and there is the sheet okay so these rolls will be separated in a certain configuration and will be their positions will be adjusted and it will bend the huge uh, sheet metal and it will give a certain curvature whatever the curvature you want the next is beading it is the periphery of the sheet is bent into the cavity of the die so there is an image here beading okay so as you can see the periphery of the sheet metal is bent into the die cavity so die is pressed on the sheet and bending the uh, periphery of the sheet metal this can be done also in a press break you see uh, we are applying pressure and to the 
basically rim and then there is your die which has the shape and then as you can see the as you can see the periphery of the sheet metal is also uh, experiencing bending here okay a certain shape is given different types of shapes can be given here you can see depending on the tip of your uh, die here okay and then we covered this that that so flanging bending of the edges of the sheet metal usually to 90 degree okay when the hemming or flattening this is the edge of the sheet is folded over itself here you can see edge is folded over itself this increases the stiffness of the edges and improve appearance of the edges and eliminate sharp edges seaming is joining of two edges of sheet metal by hemming as you can see an example here we are joining two different sheet uh, metals okay and then there is the stretch forming so as the name implies you are stretching the part the sheet metal is stretched over a die used in making wing skin panels in aircrafts and here you see there is your die and then you're you are stretching the sheet uh, using the die and another example here there is the stretching of your sheet metal over the uh, die as you can see and the rem applies the pressure okay so we covered all of these uh, bending operations so make sure you understand the difference between them and definitions of them and also watch the videos to make sure it will stay more clearly in your mind all right so now let's take a look at deep drawing deep drawing and uh, one of the most common uh, common forming operations and it is used to make cylindrical and box shaped parts such as kitchen sinks and one of the defects as you can see here a deep drawn uh, cup steel cup and due to the anisotropy of the sheet metal that you the, your blank has an anisotropy when you do deep drawing the edges can become wavy like this and this is called a uh, earring defect earring well what is deep drawing is actually a process in which the punch forces a flat sheet metal blank into a die cavity as you can see here so you start with a blank and uh, so before the blank is formed to cup this is shown here before and after after it looks like that so you are forming from the sheet blank you are forming the cup like this so this is deep draw, uh, drawing process and in image b some of the processing parameters are you uh, shown such as the p and uh, blank diameter d not uh, punch diameter d p etc like clearance C with between the punch and die, the punch radius RP, the die corner radius RD, and the force friction that can uh, exist in the contacting surfaces. All those parameters can affect the process. Um, so rubber forming, this process. Uh, uses dies that are made that are made of uh, rubber like flexible material like a polyurethane membrane 
So in this image you are seeing the flexible pad and the dyes. Uh, here it is the polyurethane, a flexible uh, material that this process uses. This type of using this type of flexible material uh, helps the other surface of the sheet uh, from scratches during the bending operation. Polyurethanes are used because they have high abrasion resistance, fatigue life, and resistance to cutting and tearing. So in this image, you are just seeing a different variations of different shapes, different type of bending operations. And there is the hydroforming. Uh, in this case, the pressure over rubber membrane is controlled by a fluid. And this method al allows us to have um, to have sheet metal forming without uh, occurrence of the wrinkles and tearing. Deeper draws can be obtained uh, compared to uh, conventional deep drawing because the pressure around the rubber uh, forces the cup against the punch. So if we look at take a look at the image here, we have a forming cavity here filled with oil and rubber diaphragm here and the punch and here is your blank and uh, so you do deep drawing here right push the punch against the blank and do deep drawing but the the oil the fluid is controlling the pressure and there is spinning uh, techniques uh, this is basically uh, we have an axisymmetric parts that we are forming you see there is a tool uh, which is held against the sheet metal and um, this sheet metal is rotated uh, attached to a mandrel and rotated and the tool, tool is uh, touching to your blank and forming the uh, types different types of shapes necessary like all these parts can be made with the spinning process This is usually done manually, uh, if you take a look at the videos uh, that I send you. And at room temperature, this is done. So in conclusion, we learned about sheet metal forming processes. And uh, what are the forces required? We also learned different type of techniques such as rubber uh, forming, hydroforming, uh, deep drawing and different type of uh, parameters like spring back and those how we can actually minimize those like wrinkling and tearing spring back how we can minimize those that's the and then we learned about uh, spinning process.